how's it going YouTube? What's happening everybody? Welcome to Aquaporn, bringing you the third and final installment of my do-it-yourself outlet box that I'm building for my do-it-yourself reef controller using uh, Arduino. Now today we're going to be going over the software side of things, but uh, first a shout out to Mark Marini, aka Marspeed. You can find him over at Reef Central. Dude's got a better grasp on all this stuff than I actually do, at least the electronic side. <clears throat> but he supplied me with a new step down. If you saw episode two, you saw that I blew up my step down and uh, he offered up, he had a couple extra and he sent them right over to me so I didn't have to wait for them from China. And uh, that's when I started having problems. And it's not because of you, Mark, it's because of of me uh, while I was waiting for the step downs to get here I decided I was going to change to an actual Arduino board I was using the Sane Smart Mega board and uh, when I changed the Arduino my pinouts were wrong or different on the Sane Smart board uh, pins 42 through 46 could all be used as uh, PWM pins and on the actual Arduino 42 and 43 cannot be and to top it all off, my touch screen went dead. So I had to wait and get a new touch screen. I put together with the new the new step down. So I put got the touch screen and put that in. And that then figured out my pin problem. And then while I was doing all that, I don't know if you can see this here, but I blew up my LED driver. Actually started a pretty good fire. Uh, just completely fried out this board so there's twenty dollars down the drain now what the hell you know I'm good to my kids I'm good to my wife why are these things happening to me it's because I really don't know what I'm doing and this was just a complete bonehead maneuver I turned off the Arduino but I forgot to turn off my power supply as I was separating all the shields and uh, I didn't even realize it and so when I pulled off this shield something touched something and it started a little fire and uh, it was it was pretty crazy for a moment so let's get into the outlet control box uh, things are under control I got another one coming from China only problem it's gonna take a month luckily I don't have that many corals in the tank only a couple little frags and uh, I can stick them under the lighting I do have because I do have another driver in there driving uh, half the tank this was for the other half so I'm not completely dead and I can progress in this this build as we go so let's talk about the outlet box because we were talking about uh, the software today because all the hardware is hooked up now I want to go over the sketch really quick if I can slide on in here And I don't go over the sketches, but um, this one I actually wrote myself without cheating, learned how to use arrays, set up the arrays properly. I actually wrote this code in about 30 minutes, 30 minutes to 45 minutes, and uh, worked right out, 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 of, out of the gate. So I was really excited about that. So first thing you want to do is you want to declare variables that you're going to use. Uh, I set up... a. Uh, uh, and says uh, outlets this is the name of the array outlets for all you beginners out there this isn't for you guys who know what you're doing it's for dumbasses like me so this is called outlets and then there's eight uh, pins in the array and then you just uh, use your curly brackets and name the pins that are going to be in the array let's see if I get close enough as you can see, I'm using pins analog pin 8 through analog pin 15. But then I also needed another variable called outlet state. And that is to determine whether the outlet is on or off. So then you go down to the setup function where I did another array correctly. I was pretty happy using a for loop. And in the for loop, it, what it does is it tests the condition you set up another uh, variable this one I called on and I set on equal to zero and then 
another condition when on is less than 8 and then this is the increments it goes up through the loop so it'll go through the loop and it'll stop at 7 so my index is from 0 to 7 which is the 8 pins so it does this little for loop and it for on for the array outlets and so I set a pin mode outlets and they're all outputs so this one line sets all those pins to an output because it goes through the for loop and then I used another for loop because I wanted to digitally write all that array the outlets on so it goes through the for loop and it turns all those pins on high so if I lose power or anything it's all going to come back on high and all the outlets will be on. Now it's going to get a little more complicated as I start setting timers and things of that nature but this is just the basic code right now. So then we'll scroll down to where I have uh, a void function and this is before the loop as well where I need to uh, use the outlet status. So this one's called outlet status it's just a little uh, function that when it'll digitally read the outlet, the array outlet, the first pin, and if it's high, it's going to fill a green circle on the screen. Else if, using the if and else if, if the outlet state is low, it'll draw a red circle. So basically, this little function just colors the, the LCD on my screen. And it does it for all eight pins down to here. So that all happens before the loop. Now we'll get into the loop. And the loop was similar using if and else if statements to uh, call on so I can turn up the outlets on and off basically. And it's real simple code. I probably didn't do it as efficiently as I probably could have. But basically this is saying when I get to my outlet screen, so if the outlet screen is true, and if there's a touch between these X coordinates and these Y coordinates, I use my uh, variable outlet state to digitally read the outlet. And if the outlet state is high, it'll digi digitally write outlet low. So if it's already high and you push a button, it turns it off. And then <clears throat> you go to outlet status, so it goes back up into that function and it turns the, the button the proper color. So I did that for all these. So if it's if it's high or if it's low and I hit it then it'll turn it high comes down to outlet status to fill the color on the screen so let's go take a look at the Arduino itself so you know what I'm talking about when you push the button and all that type of thing okay so this is the outlet screen I was talking about with my buttons as you can see all the circles are green Let's see if I can get close enough. Well, you can see this side's green. I don't know about my camera. But, let's see if I can do it one-handed now, too. Because I don't have this set up right. So, when you push it, you can see they turn red. So, this indicates the outlet's on. Red indicates that the outlet's off. And I'll be able to hook this up to my phone at a later date. And I'll be able to do this right from my phone as well. Now I have uh, the lamp behind me connected to outlet 8. You can see it got dark in the room. It's off. Push it, it's back on. Turn screen. So I was pretty proud of that. I know it's no big whoop to a lot of you guys out there who are already into Arduino and everything. But I thought it was pretty cool. And now I don't have to get underneath to unplug things when I do water changes. I can just all do it right from here. And this is just the basic functions. This, like I said, I'll have timers for my algae scrubber. I'll uh, probably have a timer for my sump lights. Uh, heater is going to have like fail safes if the water gets too hot. It'll automatically turn off if the tank temperature reaches a certain, uh, a certain temperature. And that type of thing. So that's it in a nutshell. Hope I didn't bore all my fish friends too much. I know the Arduino guys will like this video. So, comment, rate, subscribe. We'll catch you next time. I've got the pH monitor, and that's going in next. And I don't need the the driver, or the, yeah, the LED driver here to get that done. 
So comment, rate, subscribe. We'll catch you all next time.